Hello, and welcome to the He Local Podcast. I am your host, Nicole. I am coming to you from Colorado, and it is Sunday, July... No, it's Saturday, July 30th. Um, and I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be back podcasting. I haven't podcast in, I think, close to a month. Um, I did a little short video with Mina to wrap up the cow that we were doing together, and... Um, I know she put that on her podcast, but my life has been um, pretty transitional this summer. So um, I've been doing more knitting now than I have been able to get in before, which is really exciting. And um, for those of you that don't know, we recently bought our first house and uh, we are pregnant with baby number four and it was a surprise. So there are a lot of um, new things coming. And then of course it's um, the summer and I have three little boys, so we're busy going to the pool, and um, I try to work out a couple times a week just to take care of myself with baby. Um, Right now, my husband and boys are out at the skate park, so I thought that's a really good chance for me to uh, sneak in a podcast and share with you guys what I've been doing as far as knitting goes. Um, I have a few stack acquisitions to share and um, a few little future giveaway items and some fun. I'm just looking around. I have a table in front of me full of things. Um, I'm kind of winging it today. I don't really have uh, anything I'm following, so hope it goes well. <laughs> um, but yeah, it feels really good to be back. I will do shop update at the end of the episode, so if you are interested in that, stick around. I'm going to make sure that I started my timer too long. It looks like it stopped. Okay, that's right. Here we go. Okay, so first thing, um, it's been three months since we moved in. I'm still unpacking boxes. I don't really, I don't really have a space. Um, I was kind of, I had my own space in our rental and I was dying in the kitchen. And when we moved into this house, it's smaller. I don't really have my own space quite yet. I'm in the the uh, middle of making that happen so I haven't had to um, I haven't been able to unpack some of my boxes because I have no place to put anything Um, but when I moved in I was certain I didn't want to die in my kitchen anymore so um, I have been we've been converting our garage into a studio and I'm really excited about it and I'm sure I'll be able to share that with all of you very soon as soon as it's done but it's been quite a process um, I no longer cook on the stove I cook on induction burners um, and I think actually a lot of you indie dyers out there or people that are just like dabbling in dyeing would be really interested to see kind of that kind of setup um, apart from the kitchen and it is safer it keeps the dye away from your food you don't have any cross-contamination and stuff like that so Definitely expect to be updated on that as it develops. And um, until then, I'm kind of just recording in random spaces around my house. (laughs) Um, I'm in my kitchen right now, and you're looking into the living room. Previously, I was in my my, um, third son's, my 18-month-old's bedroom, hanging out in the corner with all of you. So just a process. Thanks for coming along with me on the journey of getting this all figured out. Um, you might even see me out in the garage soon. That would be great. And, uh, my in-laws are moving here in a week and, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that as well because I know I'll get a little bit of extra time to get that set up and get that all situated out there as a workspace. I'm trying to decide what to share with you first. Um, I think I'm going to share with you, I have been working on a sweater for the baby and we're waiting to find out the gender of the baby until it comes. It just always (laughs) feels weird saying it, but baby comes. Um, So I'm kind of choosing some gender neutral colors for that, which is funny because as an art teacher, um, I was an art teacher before I started having kids and still consider myself an art teacher, I guess. Um, I never was really much on like one color belongs to one gender and this and that. So, um, but I do know it's like a phrasing that most people, you know, recognize and that, and that sort of thing. So I'm referencing it because of that. 
I would have no problem putting a girl in a blue sweater or a boy in a pink sweater. So, um, but this is a really nice middle of the road color. I absolutely love it. It has blues, oranges, and kind of some really great neutral brown tones. This is Madeline Tosh. One thing I really love about Madeline Tosh is just the layering that they get in their dyeing. Here's the color way. Again, it's called Earl Grey, and this is in the Madeline Tosh Vintage, which I believe that's correct, it's worsted weight. And Flax is a free pattern on Ravelry by Tin Can Knits. They created like a whole set of, I don't wanna, I think it's like seven, or a whole set of patterns that are for beginners, um, to different knit items and you know baby sweater so it's a free pattern and there's also flax light which is also a free pattern i believe it's a fingering weight pattern but i really like this one um the pattern starts just up at the neckline and it's so simple uh, you cast it on a size six i did a magic loop um, cast on and i used my knitter's pride interchangeable set and I wanted to talk about it today but I can't find it anywhere in the house so um, that will have to wait until next time um, but I really like it and I haven't had a chance to use the set much I was sent it to review and the needle sizes are a bit larger in that and I've only really been working on fingering weight uh, projects and stuff so I haven't had a chance to use it but I, I did the other day and I really enjoyed it um, and I'll share that the next time I podcast the actual set. Excuse me. I'm in a good tradition. I always have to yawn on the podcast, whether I'm tired or not. Um, the pattern does not have a button right here, but I have put one in, and it was really quite simple. I just cast on five extra stitches and uh, knit that back and forth for, mm, gosh, an inch, 10, 11 rows. And um, then I kind of crossed those five stitches over with like a DPN style um, three needle bind off type thing. And obviously did the buttonhole. Um, I just thought that it would be a little bit more convenient to getting the sweater around the baby's neck to be able to have a buttonhole. So, and a few other projects had a, a couple buttonholes and I thought that, that it was quite cute. So. There will be a button, just a single one right there. And then the shoulders and all the way down the arm, you have this really gorgeous garter. Edging, edging, ribbing, whatever we call it. This is like garter decoration all along the shoulder. So um, it's a really simple, straightforward knit. I would definitely recommend using stitch markers in the beginning of the cast on because, um, I'm just checking my time, I got lost initially and you're and you have these increases right here right next to this pretty garter that you're establishing and you're you're doing a pearl and then a knit and a pearl and a knit on the garter so um gosh that would be harder yeah and um it's really easy to get confused. So I totally had to rip it back and I had messed it up and stuff. So um, I would definitely suggest using stitch markers for that. And then once I knit down for a while here, it split and I knit all of this just in one night. It's a super, super fast. The cast on is a size six, but you change after the bands on the neck to an eight and it's a super fast it actually feels um, pretty stretchy. I kind of wonder if I would have preferred it in like a, a seven or a six, um, but I do think it'll be nice with a baby to just stretch on over <laughs> the top. You never really want anything super tight and constricting like a sweater on a baby. So it's gonna be so cute. Um, I've kind of held off finishing it just because I wanted to show it on the podcast. I totally could have had this thing done in a couple of days. Um, and then obviously once this is done, it's just a simple um, knit, a one by one and knit one pearl one um, on the bottom for the ribbing. And then obviously I'll pick these up on the arms and knit on down to 
for the ribbing. So it's super straightforward. I would definitely suggest checking out this uh, pattern, Flax by Tin Can Knits. It's really nice, it's free, and um, Earl Grey, Madeline Tosh, beautiful color. So that is my little baby sweater for now. And I wanted to thank some of you. You've written me and you've even purchased some of my yarn to knit little sweaters for the baby. And I think that is so dear and darling and kind. Um, you know, you're, you're giving of your financial means, your time. It's just really thoughtful. So thank you to those of you who are also knitting the baby little sweaters. And I think the baby will be... Um, very fashionable and all dolled up um, when it gets here. I also, since we're talking about Madeline Tosh, I'll go ahead and share this. I purchased, and this is my first purchase, but I've followed um, Skein Cocaine on Instagram for quite some time, and she runs auctions on Thursdays and Friday evenings. Um, and um, I hadn't purchased anything, mostly because I hadn't been able to get there in time. They generally sell out so quickly. I never remember. <laughs> I never am like, oh, it's Thursday. There's an auction tonight. I mean, it's just, it's not on my radar. So I happened to get on on Thursday and there was a kit left. Um, and I think, let's see what it's called really quick. Quick. It, oh, Onward. So it was an, called an Onward kit. And it came with four skeins of, I think it's Tosh Vintage actually. Yeah. The same stuff that I'm using to um, do flax. So it's a worsted weight shawl. I'm trying to see if I can find a really good picture of it. But here's the picture right here of the side. It's really beautiful. It has um, this amazing pattern on it. And I thought, how fun would it be to have a big, cozy shawl? And this book came with it. It is Journey, a collaboration. Jane Richmond and Shannon Cook. And the patterns in here are absolutely divine. I love every single pattern. I could see myself knitting every single one. A lot of times I hesitate to buy books because I only like like one or two of the patterns in the book and I'd rather purchase the pattern separately on Ravelry than have a whole book full of patterns that I'm probably not going to be knitting. So um, before I bought this kit, I, quit, I quick scrambled to Ravelry and looked at the patterns in the book. And so once I saw, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're all amazing. Um, I went ahead and got the kit. And here's the yarn that came with it. It's so pretty. Totally up my alley. I'm a purple girl. I love purple. And it kind of has a blue um, tone to it as well. So like I said, this is Tosh Vintage. It's worsted 200 yards per skein. Uh, 7 to 9. And it is Moonstone. So I love that idea that you can... Um, you know, get the whole kit, get all the yarn you need, and do the, the shawl. I will definitely be doing, I probably should have had this marked, but I will definitely be doing the, um, there is a pattern in here for a sweater that is insane. I love the sweater. It's so pretty. Obviously, I'll do it for my, my normal size, um, my not pregnant size. I don't know how well you can see this, but I think in the end it would require me to get six skeins for my size. Um, they base it on the bust and there's a big chart in the back. Um, but six skeins of worsted, it's so pretty. It just has this gorgeous garter and beautiful pattern down the middle. Uh, I love it. So I'll definitely be doing that at some point. I'm not sure when, but I will. Um, so yeah, I wanted to share that from you. And if you don't follow Skin Cocaine, I would recommend it. She puts so many um, things up for sale on Thursday and Friday. It was she their auction, I guess. Um, different brands of yarn, books, stitch markers. I mean, it's really great for a knitter. Um, and you just, if you don't pre-register with her, you literally just in the comments, right? Sold one and put your email and she'll contact you. So she makes it very easy. Um, I also ordered a couple bags from This Handmade Life. Uh, I also follow her on Instagram and she's super sweet. I just saw a few bags she was working on. I thought, oh my gosh, personally, it seemed like she was working on them personally. I was like, would you make, do you have any extras? Um, so she did these for me and I thought it would be perfect. One of them could be perfect for, um, 
the Hue Loco 7K giveaway. So every time I reach like another 1,000 milestone, I do a giveaway. And um, I thought it would be awesome to include one of these because she does such a great job. I believe her name is Olivia. Uh, so I'll show the first one. It's like this adorable granny, granny square patchwork bag. I'm like having a hard time saying that. Granny square patchwork bag. Um, and it has two different fun kind of color schemes. So you've got like this pink, yellow, ochre, teal. And then on the back, you have this great blue, pink, I mean, teal, cream. And it has a really fun drawstring on the top. So this is one of the bags that I purchased. And here's the other bag that I purchased. So one of these bags will be in the 7K giveaway. Um, and I think I'm like two or 300 away from uh, reaching that. This bag is just insanely amazing. This is all hand stitched. Oh, what is the name for this? My friend Christy does it all the time. Applique. Uh, I think you, you iron these on, like you put a backing on them, they're little socks, and then she stitches on top of them and little mushrooms, cute little trees with a birdie, and then of course the little, um, the fabric is just adorable too, it's darling. So this is also a um, drawstring on top. And it's really well made, Olivia does a fantastic job. It came with two stitch markers, a button, um, some like beautifully smelling sachet type thing, like lavender. Um, she really goes all out. It came in a gorgeous like drawstring brown fabric bag. So if you're ever thinking about purchasing from This Handmade Life, Olivia of This Handmade Life, her stuff is top quality for sure. So you will see one of these bags in the giveaway, the 7K giveaway that will probably be coming up very soon, which I'm excited about. Um, you guys are just, you've been so wonderful with all of your support. So um, another major thing I wanted to talk about, and I'm going to check my time really quick. I normally have this timer, but my kids they think it's so cool, and so it's always missing. <laughs> um, I wanted to talk about socks. So socks, socks, socks. Um, my friend Mina, just she's amazing with socks. She loves them, knitting them all the time. They look awesome. Uh, people are really into knitting socks. Molly knits socks all the time from a homespun house. Oh, gosh, spicy homemade. I mean, I could name a bazillion podcasters who are knitting socks. Susan B. Anderson's always making socks. In fact, she came out with, oh gosh, I need to think of what it's called. Operation. Uh, I, I'm wondering if I should just look it up really quick. She just came out with this fun way to knit socks and I bought, maybe this is poor taste to be like looking up. <laughs> stuff on but I want to give you the correct name smooth operator socks there we go she came out with this really fun pattern smooth operator socks and um, I bought it and it's pretty much like you're just trying to get a really beautifully even looking sock so I got that and I also recently picked up the fish lips kiss heel um, little dollar download as well um, because I haven't been happy with my socks I haven't really enjoyed knitting socks. I have this deep desire to love it. Um, I feel kind of like a, a weirdo in the knitting world because I'm, I'm not super into socks. And so I'm thinking, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I'm going through my stash as I'm finally unloading all these boxes and putting them away. And I'm like, Nicole, you have all this sock yarn. You have all these great fibers that would be beautiful for socks and you don't enjoy knitting socks at all. And uh, so what's been up? Um, I think upon finding some old projects of my socks, I think I've been knitting my socks in the complete, like in the wrong gauge, pretty much. I've been using a needle that's been too big. The socks end up being loose on my feet. And I really, I just despise that. Um, I don't want like a, a sock that's strangling me, but I do want a sock that's going to feel really good to wear. And especially in the winter, like I could totally see myself cozying up in some hand knit socks. Um, so a few of those examples, I'm just babbling and I need to show you some things. So here's a sock that I knit and I know I knit this on a two. I cast this on 64 stitches. 
I believe I just used a pattern for a heel I found um, from Susan B. Anderson, How I Knit My Socks. And um, I that's that's all I did. And I just did like a standard decrease on the toe. It's not, no, not anything special. Um, and I knit this whole sock and then I tried it on and I just, I remember hating how it felt on my foot. It just didn't feel snug at all like in the arch. Um, or on the ankle, and I never did the other one. Big surprise, right? Um, I did the same exact cast on with the same size needles, twos, for this sock, and tried it on, and was very unhappy with it. And this seems like it should be obvious, like even talking about it, like, oh, you're doing the, sa you know, the same cast on and then using the same needles, and you don't like, you know, how the sock's turning out. But I never really um, thought of, thought like more deeply about it. Like, why don't I enjoy knitting it? I just kind of like, you know, I don't like socks. So, um, I found these projects that hadn't been finished and a couple other socks that I hadn't finished. I knit one and I didn't do the other. So I'm like, how can I get really excited about knitting socks? I decided to try knitting socks with a tighter gauge on a one. And I cast on the same amount of stitches because I, um, I just texted Mina and said, What's your cast on? What do you do? I know you love to knit socks. Um, help me out. <laughs> help me out here. So I cast these on, and this is a Knit Picks Stroll. I think that's all it's called, Knit Picks Stroll. Here's the colorway. I think it's like winter. Gosh, this is horrible for, <laughs> I don't even remember. Like I said, these are all just like stash things that I've had for a really long time. Um, I cast this on. The gauge is so nice and tight. It feels awesome on my ankle so far. I plan on making these socks a little bit shorter. I don't want to have a huge a long top um, because I don't have enough yarn for that and I, I actually am doing them on DPNs which is huge for me because I never use DPNs. I always do magic loop but I started it on a magic loop and I was getting really annoyed with having to pull that loop through all the time. So um, I'm so far really happy with these. I'm going to knit the heel well, we can talk about that in this colorway. It's a really gorgeous magenta. Um, so it'll be very, you know, um, bold, I guess. And I've already knit the heel once and I really hated it. So I knit the heel using some instructions in the big book of socks. And it was a short row heel. Um, when it came time to close the heel, it had me picking up a spare loop in between. And I'm sure most, most of you know that I'm talking about that knit socks all the time. I really did not like the look of it. I felt like it was messy and it could have just been me not doing a good job. Um, so I ripped the whole thing out, which was a big waste because I stayed up late to get it in and everything and I was super bummed, but I didn't like it. And I really want to like these socks and enjoy them. So I ripped it out and I wrote me again and said, what's your favorite heel? She said, the German short row heel. Um, or Fish Lips Kiss. So I had re recently got that, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to learn the Fish Lips Kiss, and I'm going to give that a try. And um, I think the PDF was quite extensive, so it was late. I didn't want to sit up and read it, and I needed to pay attention. So um, I'm going to try the Fish Lips Kiss heel and do that in the magenta, which I think is going to be, like, so fun. I love on socks. I love the contrasting heel toe cuff um, look. So this is the other project that I'm also working on. So I'm hoping to have some really good progress next time I podcast um, with you and have those heels in and toes and hopefully even be working on the second sock. But I'm really excited about this. I think it, the fit is so much nicer and I don't know why I didn't try a smaller needle before, but I'm certainly glad that I have now. And I also found this in my stash. stash. It's a KFI luxury collection. Um, merino, cashmere, polyamide, am I saying that right? And it has 437 yards. I thought this would be just gorgeous for socks as well. So I'm thinking about having this be my next cast on for some socks. I think it's kind of the idea of always having some socks on the needles. I like that. So, um, those are my two things that I've been working on for knitting. And I think I'm going to continue to move on to my shop update because I'm getting close in time and I know I have like a load of stuff to share with you. So first off, I have a new 
blend of yarn that I'm bringing in. It's called the Lux Base, L-U-X-E, and it is cashmere, silk, and merino. It's insanely amazing. Um, I have an opal blend that's silk and merino, which I really like, but this takes it to like an insanely new level with the cashmere and the twist. So um, I will be releasing these every week, new colorways on my new base. And I haven't named this colorway yet, but I love it. It's It just turned out so insanely amazing. I know I can't get like super close to you, but it is on a base of cream and it has speckle. It's just a speckle, glorious speckle skein pretty much. Um, it has ochre and toned down limes and teals and uh, a little bit of a lighter and a deeper brown. It's insane. I'm dying to see this knit in like a lightweight cardigan. I think it would be gorgeous. And I'm also gonna be releasing um, tonals to go with these on the Lux base. And I already have a few worked up, some ochres and greens and teals and just really beautiful in case somebody wants to do like a two color shawl or a two color shawl. I mean, really you can do uh, just, you could knit anything out of this base. I love it. It will be staying around for a long time. So I hope that all of you love it as well. And I'm hoping to have this up this next week in the shop. So that's the first colorway that will be coming out and I'll have to think of a name for that one. Um, I wanted to share with you also this will be coming out next week on the Boca Sock. It is not yet named either, but it is this beautiful purple hank all sorts of purples. It has some blue, blue purples and some burnt siennas. This is what the hank looks like, not reskained. That's some really fun, bright purples too on the bottom. So this will also be coming out next week. And here are some things that are already in the shop and I'm gonna move a little quickly because there are a lot. I am doing mini skeins. So here is one of my sock mini, mini packs. You get seven mini skeins. They're 20 grams each. Um, for a total of 600 some yards. I mean, it's a lot of yarn in here. Uh, this is in the shop now, it's called Bungalow. And this is also in the shop, my personal favorite, Banana Hammock. <laughs> I just get a kick out of that every time. Um, so here are a few bags, and now there are only one or two of these left in the shop. If you're interested in those, I will not be restocking those. This is new in the shop, kitty bags, and so many people have been waiting for these. They've arrived, so they're super cute. Um, I'm not going to guarantee that any particular lining will be in these. I think they're all this lining. I think they're all that lining, um, but it definitely will be guaranteed to be cute. It's a medium bag with an enamel zipper pull. You get a nice wide bottom for your project. I, I'm like a medium bag kind of girl, go to. And here's Fox and Sweater. These, what's in the shop for these two bags will be it. That is it. And I'm going to quickly go through the colorways that have been updated in the shop. Um, I have hibiscus, reskained, not reskained. Stardust in the shop, that's always popular. I forget the name of this colorway. Really fun lime greens, yellows, teals. There is more Robin's egg in the shop. I love this one. I'd love for you to tag me on Instagram with some pictures of this knit because I'm really curious about that one. I love that one. Um, Skip with me. It's a purple. This is not reskained. Compliment me has joined back in the shop. I know some of you have been asking. And then these are both new this week. This is rabbit hole on a teal base with pinks, blues, and limes. Um, this is a really fun one. So this is the last colorway that just came in this last week. It's on the single sock. It's pretty much the rainbow with grays and blacks mixed in, which is really fun and will be super cute knit up. I could totally see this being a really fun, like, slouchy hat for the fall. Um, it is called Dirty Talk, I believe. I'm trying to remember. I don't have a take on this one. So, um, yeah, you can check that out in the shop. So to all of you who have continued to just support and follow along and um, be patient with my podcast, I really appreciate it. And I am um, looking forward to getting back into doing it more routinely. Um, so thank you for 
following along with me today, knitting along with me, and until next time, I'll see ya.